Well, thank you for being here. Um, it's always a pleasure. Uh, this year they've asked if I would uh, just kind of take you through this being the 10-year anniversary of uh, the 10 years of Learning 2. And so we're going to start back in 2007 uh, where this whole thing started. And most people, when you think of 2007, probably remember this big announcement, uh, the year of the iPhone. Uh, but in international world, we remember this big announcement, <laughs> uh, the first year of Learning 2. And Learning 2 was really a, a crazy idea uh, between uh, John Zerflu and Michael Weber at the time, who worked at SCIS here in Shanghai and uh, Concordia International School. And the idea was, is what if we could bring the three schools together to have some kind of collaborative conference? And they sent out um, an email to a bunch of us. I was working here on the Pushi campus at the time in Shanghai, along with David Gran, who I roped into making our first logos. And so for the first couple conferences, the three schools came together as a way of how do we share resources in this new digital world we find ourselves in. And so in 2007, we launched the first Learning 2. We didn't know if anybody would show up. <laughs> um, I remember there was one meeting where we were literally counting how much money we had in the bank account to cover the costs of the conference in case nobody showed up. Uh, but it was quite interesting because people actually did. And then we got scared because it meant we had to do something. And so. When we started this conference, one of the first things that we started thinking about is how do you create a conference experience that puts the participants first? We were finding that a lot of the conferences we were going to were the same old 50-minute session, sit and get session, and we keep telling ourselves as educators that we want student-centered learning. Well, if you're going to have student-centered learning, what if you made a student-centered conference or a participant-driven conference? And so when we started this in 2007, that was the idea. That has always been the driving force of Learning 2, is how do we make you as involved as possible in the conference itself? And the first conference was quite interesting. In 2007, Twitter was unblocked here in Shanghai, and we made, a we made everybody sign up for a Twitter account. And I still run into international teachers today. Are there any in the crowd that set up their Twitter account at the first Learning 2? Yeah, there's a couple of you out there. Like we. And I still get people come to me, it's like, I had, we had no idea what Twitter was at the time. And you need to remember that the iPhone had just been announced like a month before the conference. Nobody had smartphones. And so we were on the internet, on Twitter, on our, on our laptops, and on our flip phones. Because that's what Twitter started out as, is was a way to do group message on a flip phone. And so we made everybody sign up for Twitter that first year and ran the entire conference off of Twitter, getting feedback from participants along the way. At the end of the conference, we had a big celebration. This is the, probably the only picture we have uh, because, you know, we didn't have phones on, on cameras, or cameras on phones, sorry, at the time. But uh, this is the end of the conference. That's Mr. John Zerflu right there. And we've got the rest of the crew here. Uh, there's, uh, I don't even know who these people are. There's Simon May. We're going to talk a lot about Simon May. There's Michael Weber. There's David Gran. Uh, and just kind of the crew that kind of first put that first conference together. And as soon as the conference was over, we were like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And I remember, it was about a week later, we got together, and we sat in a room, and we were like, well, do we run it again? And we were so exhausted. We're all full-time educators at the time. And we were like, do we actually try and pull this off again? And uh, we finally decided we would. And so then in 2008, uh, David Grant made this uh, nice logo for us, and we started the entire thing. And we tried to start thinking about how do we continue to put the participant need first and understand that learning is a social act. That when we went to conferences, we realized that the conversations we had in the hallways were some of the best conversations you had at conferences. And how do we take those conversations you have in the hallways and make that the conference itself? And so in 2008, we came up with a crazy idea that would put the participant first and make the entire conference social by running the whole thing as an unconference. The entire conference was ran by participants. So this is Julie Lindsay, who you is running sessions here, uh, putting on one of her uh, global collaboration. We hung them all up on the wall, and you would go to an unconference session. You would come back. You we would have new things posted up on the on the windows. You would then tally mark which one you would want to vote for next, and we would create an entirely driven participant driven conference. A couple things came out of that conference. One. A group of educators from Hong Kong got together and decided that they wanted to do a conference much like this in Hong Kong. That conference is still running today. And other conversations around what does technology look like when there's no facilitator. And so after the conference, it led to crazy things like this. 
And we had people getting on stage, dressed up in all kinds of crazy gear, trying to promote their unconference sessions, giving speeches about their unconference sessions. And it was this really organic, participant-driven conference. And we knew at that point that the unconference format needed to become part of this conference. And from that, from 2008 forward, unconferences have always been a big piece. But unconferences only work when the participants decide to tell us what it is you want to learn. That is why voting for things, telling us what you want, is what makes the unconference. It's your conference. And we find it very interesting that participants have a hard time understanding a conference that you're the center of. You're not going to sit and get at this conference. You're not going to be in one hour sessions, right? We are here for you. What you put into this conference is what you will get out of it. It's your conference. How do you want it to run? What do you want it to do? In 2009, we took a break. It's the only year they haven't run into it. We were tired. <laughs> we didn't know if we wanted to continue doing this. We came back in 2010, ran the conference again, uh, along with the unconference sessions. We started playing around with what are other types of session models that we wanted. In 2010, of course, the iPad is released. And so we have a whole conference that's focused a lot on mobile devices. You know, the phone's been out for three years now. iPads are coming out. What is the change in education when all of a sudden we have all these mobile devices? We then looked at our next principle that runs Learning 2, which is create a conference that is ever-changing, takes risk, and uses technology in appropriate ways. You'll find that our unconference sessions are still done on paper and pencil. We tried doing it technology, and it just doesn't work. Paper and pencil is the right tool for the job. And so you'll hopefully find throughout this conference, we don't do everything with tech. Sometimes the best tech is marker and pen and sticky notes, and we try to embody that throughout. In 2012, we needed a change of some type. We were tired. People were moving on. Uh, I had moved on to Bangkok at the time. I think, John, you had moved on by this point. And so the core team that started this conference had kind of moved on to other international schools. So at that point, we decided to uh, kind of take the conference on the road. And Madeline Brooks had come to us and said, we'd love to host this in Beijing. And we were like, excellent, it's yours. And so 2012 was in uh, Beijing. Um, we find that Simon has a love for buses. And uh, the students in Beijing do a little skit on stage, and they make him this massive badge called Mr. Sparkles. And uh, ever since then, he has been known as Mr. Sparkles, the bus man. Uh, he's always been in charge of buses. In 2012 as well, um, we started thinking about learning spaces. And WAB had some beautiful learning spaces. And the big focus of that theme in 2012 was about these learning spaces. It's also in 2012 that Kim Cofino, Simon May, myself, and Matt uh, got together. And we were like, what do we do with this? Schools had started coming to us behind the scenes, being like, can we host the next one? What would it take to get learning to here? And the four of us kind of came together and started thinking about, OK, well, what does this mean? Where do we go from here? And how do we choose the next school? We need to start thinking about putting a process in place. And so it was at those conversations that we started thinking, OK, how do we move this around Asia and really spread the wealth? And in 2013, we went to Singapore, uh, took the conference to Singapore at the UWC school. Uh, there's all the Learn to leaders outside. And we knew there was something special at this conference in 2013 when people were willing to go get tattoos of the conference symbol. And this is a, this is a crazy thing for me, because what is it that we have created at Learning 2 that moves people to go get a tattoo about their experience here? And I've talked to participants who have come to these conferences multiple times, and I asked them, I was like, what is it about coming to Learning 2? What pulls you back? And people have a hard time saying, what is that magic thing? What is the community feel you get at Learning 2? And I don't know how we create it. I don't know why it exists. But when you come to a Learning 2 conference, people a lot of times walk away going, that was really interesting. And we hope you have that same experience here. It's also at the last debrief session. I was just talking to Clint this morning. At the last debrief session in um, Singapore, I'm sitting next to Clint Hamada. And we're like, oh my gosh, this thing's going to go viral. And so I accidentally opened up uh, where I buy all my domain names. And I bought every Learning 2 domain name on, if you see over here, October 9th. Uh, was the last day of the conference in Singapore. And we bought like learningtolead.org and learningtotech.org. And I bought Learning to North America, Learning to South America. Learning to org um, was not available, so it was learningto.asia. 
And then later we moved to learningto.info, and then finally learningto.org came available, and we bought it as well. So there's all these little pieces that kind of lead to where we are today. We then cr started to think about how do we create a conference that continues to change with the needs of the participants. And in Singapore, little did we know at the time that John Ingler and Andre de Coker, who's in the audience, now works at Concordia, which is just this weird kind of circle, had come to Singapore and decided we want to bring this conference to Africa. And they contacted us, and next thing you know, in 2014, we are hosting the first, one of the first educational technology focused for international schools on the continent of Africa. It is also one of the only places you will find a learning to safari vest, a very collectible item, uh, there in Singapore as well. And so we had to think about how do we continue to change the conference? Because at the school in Ethiopia and most of Africa, kids were already one-to-one, -one, but they were on Linux-based machines, and kids can actually hack their laptops. And they're actually encouraged to lack, hack their laptops at the school. In 2014, we also went to Bangkok, uh, where we continue to kind of refine the learning to process. Uh, this is the last social that we had outside, because of course the weather there allows it. In 2015, we came back together, Kim, Mads, um, myself, and Simon, and decided we needed to, to kind of move this on. If we're taking this thing global, we need to like make it official. And so in 2015, we moved the status of Learning2 into a nonprofit. It's now registered as a 501c3 nonprofit in the States. Uh, and we were able to start thinking about, okay, how do we brand this? What does this look like? And in 2015, for the first time then, as a nonprofit, we ran a conference in South, uh, South Africa, in Joburg. And then we had the one in Asia, in Milan as well. We were constantly thinking about what's the next step. And we were being pushed by participants to be, what's the next thing for me? I've now gone to three or four learning twos. I get it. I've drank the Kool-Aid. What do I do next? And so it's in Milan that we invent the in Innovate Strand, which is basically a conference inside a conference, where these people have their own leader. They get to work together for two days straight to come up with crazy and bold ideas to take back to their school. In 2016, we expand even more. Europe starts jumping on board, and that is where we get Stephen and Carrie, who host the first Learning 2. Yes, Stephen's very proud of this, at the, uh, in Milan. Uh, so this, all of a sudden, we're in Milan. We also tried to host one in South America. We didn't quite get the people, but we were able to sponsor a small local conference of about 30 teachers who really wanted the experience in South America as well. We also were in Vietnam that year. Um, that was just last year. And now this year, again, we're running both one here in Asia and then the other one that just happened uh, last spring in Warsaw. And the crazy part is, is this thing just continues to become full circle, is John Zerflu is now the head of school at the, inter at the International School of Warsaw. And so there's, there's this whole crazy circle of, you know, the guy that started the conference is now the superintendent or head of school of hosting the conference uh, 10 years later and how crazy of a circle this is in the international world. Um, and so, you know, it was a great conference last spring, which brings us to today's conference and the 10 years of Learning2. What does the next decade look like for us? I absolutely have no idea. 10 years ago, we didn't know what the iPhone would do. We didn't know what the iPad would do. All I know is that we are so appreciative that you continue to show up to the conference, um, and we are here to support you and run professional development for you any way we can. Thank you.